This video contains strong language not suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. So, welcome back, everybody. Uh, welcome back to our episode of Seven White Dudes and a Lady, because uh, we still don't have a better name for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, as Chris, hope, um, if anyone didn't catch the tail end of the episode, which I think was just uh, Mike and Rachel, because um, everyone else is there, um, you guys are currently in, you're, you are below the sewers. Your adventures in the sewers has led you to basically like the sub basement of Korimvor. And after a, uh, brief, but kind of, uh, kind of aggressive, uh, interaction with core, um, you guys, Let's back up a little bit. You guys snuck around the corner and saw Kor um, and heard someone speaking in Dwarvish around the corner. Um, and I believe it was Mori and Lythar snuck around the corner to get a peek. Um, and so you saw, you heard this dwarf speaking uh, and DP, from what you heard, it sounded an awful lot like a lineage. He was speaking like his family line, um, ending with him and how he had no descendants. Uh, the dwarf's name, because I wrote it down, because I made all this up. Um, Pablo Nimblenben Jensen. Darren Stonehearth is Close. the name of the dwarf on the. <laughs> it depends on how you conjugate. <laughs> um, but so his, so Darren Stonehearth declared that he was the last of his clan and then was basically like dumped on the floor um and after a brief a brief scuffle where uh what where core has opened these three locks on this enormous dwarven door in front of you um you guys get a few really really good shots in at him uh but he managed like as he's falling he falls through the door and the door slams shut and the three locks seal behind him um so you guys all kind of catch your breath uh frank unfortunately took uh took a tumble and is uh not demolished uh he's uh he's a little sleepy and in pieces um but mari this is definitely not something that uh this isn't unusual this is definitely something that uh, you can fix. It might take a little bit of time. Um, but as you guys sort of took your, your short rest at the door, um, well, and that's kind of where we picked up is you guys are all like collecting yourselves and collecting with each other. Um, there were a few... The one thing that Kor said as he was staring face-to-face -face with Robbie, does anyone remember... Did anyone write it down? Oh. Let's start with writing it down, and then we'll talk about remembering. What he said to Robbie? What? Yes. I thought Robbie uh, said was, to him, "You're an anomaly." It was. You must. Uh, like I can't remember the name, but it was like ex machina has no interest. Oh. Or something. In. Yes. Uh, <laughs> in in machina, but you were like. You're ninety nine percent there, so I'll get that was to better you. than me. Um, hey. so yeah, after after a little bit of of you know, witty repartee, uh, the name in Machina was brought up. Um, and there seemed to be a particular bit of vehemence between Robbie and Kor, whom he's met once for what, like three minutes in, uh, in and the basement. did a gun at his head. You did put a gun at his head, which doesn't bode well for diplomatic relations <laughs> as we learned in episode one. Um, <laughs> so, you guys uh, sort of took your took a minute, took a breather, um, and as you're sitting in front of this door, you're seeing um, in sort of the light of these glowing panels on the wall, um, you can see dwarvish inscriptions on on this door, and a, a chiseled into a piece of stone on the wall. At about um, 
you know, a, about head height on a dwarf, so like a little low for for your average human. You see a flush piece of stone with writing chiseled in it. Um, and so that's kind of where kind of where we leave off. I would like to point out that one of your cats was being adorable in the background. So <laughs> Scott, I did, I did see Scotty frolicking. I did my yeah. absolute hardest to not pay attention to her. Like leaped on the she floor is... and then the tail went. It definitely she... distracted me a little bit. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll have to put them away. Um, <laughs> no. But yeah. So. Let them free. So you guys, you guys, there she goes. <laughs> Which be the new name of the show? Cats. Cats. <laughs> Scotty's got to know. D and D. Scotty's, Scotty's got to know. Scott, <laughs> what on earth is this demon cat doing? Anyway, on fire. um, so yeah, what would what would y'all like to do in front of this door? I, I'd I'm like to go. Study. I'd like to go home, please. Up, up to the... So this is this is kind of during during your short rest. So while while you guys are getting getting those those sweet sweet hit points back, um, so Thalia wants to study the door. Uh, more, you speak dwarvish. Yeah. Okay. And so and Robbie, you you're seeing this and it it's it's clicking. Like the symbols don't make sense, but all of a sudden they do. And just like as you're reading through it, it looks like they're just they're not changing, but it's being like the symbols are being kind of pulled off the wall and they're put fitting together in a way that makes sense. Google Translate. It, it, you're not wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's actually an update to the OS. Uh. Um, but yeah, so so Maury, Thalia, and Robbie, you guys want to study the door? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll check it out. Okay. Um, so, so Thalia, since you can't actually... Um, Did I provide I have... assistance to anybody since I can't? I wouldn't really be useful doing it myself, or is that not? Um, not... So the three of them are kind of working on it together. Oh, word. Um, because Thalia, the like, the learned one of the group, uh, can't read Dwarvish. Ah, nope. Um, so it's the a list of things to do. So I'm about to throw some. Pictures in the dump. Can I add you do do? So as as you're kind of working and looking at all of this, it's starting. It kind of shimmers a little bit. Like the words don't stay as resolute. They don't stay like they should for being written in stone. Um, but you're able to kind of write them down. Oh, don't. Don't say you can't send these f stupid files. How dare you try and send files over 25 megabytes in size. <laughs> this one's four you. and a half megs. <laughs> uh, you. Oh, wow. That's what the door says? That is, so that's the writing on the side of the door. And this is the right. The second picture is the writing that is on the door. It's very sideways. Uh, I'm terribly sorry my phone <laughs> decided not to be useful. Um, now that I put what? my glasses on, for me, the entire bottom row of people have glasses on. Oh. For me, I I have you're in the top row between Robbie and Lamy. Yeah, for, for me, you're next to... Because I arranged you that middle. way. I've got bottom um, row glasses. So, to Maury and... Um, Robbie, I was like Mike, Frank. No, none of these names are correct. <laughs> yeah, I want to. I wanted to bring up with you uh, your uh, tendency towards robot racism. Uh, we, <laughs> we don't I have robot friends. I have robot friends. It's fine. <laughs> There's um, one named Roomba. Oh God, I don't have a Roomba. <laughs> and. Give me one second, because again, I definitely would have had this prepared if I was a good DM. Curtis, you need to. In the meantime, buy a who wants a song of rest? Because I actually have one. Do what? Who oh, wants wait. a song of rest? Because I actually yeah, have one. Yeah, Curtis said uh, that uh, we song of rested. You you already song of rested us, but I didn't roll that. I did, but I actually, like, 
did a thing. I don't have any backup music, but if you don't mind my voice, I can sing. I sure. rolled a two. <laughs> Hear a song oh, while you party and take the spoon and take the spoon. Oh. Hear a song while you party and cure your wounds. Yay! Yay! <laughs> If you don't have inspiration, please take one. <laughs> I do um, have inspiration right now. That's, I, I would say take two and roll an advantage, but that doesn't really help you here. Um, so, Maury, your, your quick translation. Um, I just kicked you what's on the side panel, and I'm about to kick you. Why would you kick him? Because it's fun and I'm a sadist. Oh. Um, Ooh. Ooh, host. Do nope. Ask, this is it's not written me. in it's not written in German. Oh. <laughs> um and DP, the second part that I just sent you is what is written on the door. Uh and Robbie, you've also gleaned all of this information, and the two of you are kind of cross collaborating um to to make sure your your translations are, are correct. Because Robbie's were close, but he's mixing, he's missing a few idioms and metaphors, and uh, the conjugation isn't quite right because it is Google Translate um, being fed through his warlockness. Um, Why, Why would, would you take a horse to water? <laughs> Horses need uh, to drink water, you know, like. <laughs> <coughs> I understand. <laughs> Remind me not to make that noise ever again. Can I get that noise one more time? I, no. I, I want to record that for, for My future My eyes stuff. are watering. I'm proud of you. You're getting into your Foley expertise. Uh. <laughs> Foley. Foley. Leave. You know. Get your... Get your. Why is the robot better at puns than all of you? This is disappointing. Um. So, yeah. So, um, Maureen, Robbie, you guys have kind of compiled that together. Um, and if you, so what you, what you do with this information is entirely up to you. Um, if you, and I could share the translation with, uh, with Thally if you would like. Uh, yeah, I, I would imagine that I just literally start reading this out loud. Yeah. If you, if you're, uh, it's, it's what I got earlier, right? Uh, Yes. Uh, starting with the smaller note. Yes. Or, or you can read from the door, from the door down. Ooh, let's start with the smaller note. Hold on. Phone. Uh. Or here, I could send you the the translation, so it's a little easier. Uh, I've got it. It's just my phone keeps flipping the picture because your phone didn't want to send it the direct, the correct orientation. So, yeah, David, phone. Yeah. Uh, by order of King Ragorin. Ooh, dark phone. This door to be sealed to prevent the destruction of the deep kingdom. The beast. Oh yeah, I don't have that full word there. The Ranex. Uh, Firanex. Firanex yes. must not escape. His flame and claws drove us out, but his flame has sealed him in. May the gods forgive us, King Ragorin, the sacred. Shall I continue? Yes. Well, well. You heard the shiny metal man. It's time to go. We're, it's we're time to go to the tavern. We're gonna leave this all behind. To the leaky tap. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, wait. The, no, it's the, the door twist and is shout. supposed to be closed. Therefore, we leave the door closed. <laughs> is there anything else that can be in in uh, looked upon or looted or <laughs> wrenched from the walls? <laughs> Well, what else does the door say? Please continue. To prove you are no dragon whelp, and such you do offer first help, first speak your claim on the lands below, as far back as the clans can know. A dragon knows the one true name, for it and they are one aflame. So for the broken blade and spindle, show you can make shadows kindle. The pride of dwarf and dragon twinned, riches wait in halls within. 
To show you enter, not for gold, offer it faith and enter bold. Mm, I hate riddles. We have a dragon. We do have a dragon, but it sounded like it didn't like dragons, and it sounded like it was a dragon. Named Pothramax. <laughs> I believe. Byronax. Byronax. Yeah, if, if you say that, we're definitely going to get demonetized, and Bethesda <laughs> getting mad. So let's not anger Bethesda, thank you. They're, they're not allowed I live, to I live there. Elder <laughs> Yeah, they can't do anything until Elder Scrolls 6 comes out. No one takes them seriously. <laughs> you guys don't want a Skyrim ported to your Nokia refrigerator? I do want that. I, I do want that, actually. I don't. <laughs> anyway. Farthramax. Uh, I can spell that for you. And actually, I'm just going to... No, dunk. I like my uh, spelling more. So, so for those of you who care about spelling, <laughs> uh, P-H-Y-R-A-N-N-A-X. Fear an X. I've been spelling everything wrong in my notebook, and I kind of mm -hmm. love that. That's fine. <laughs> I need Your to, intelligence is... It fits me as a character. I need to expand to an actual notebook. Can you, sorry, can you spell it again? Uh, P-H-Y-R-A-N-N-A-X. <laughs> what program is it? Um, it is. And the, ki the, um, the king's name uh, was King Ragorin. R-A-G-O-R-I-N. I'm also taking notes in my perspective, which I think is also fun. My my notes for this section is the door had a uh, riddle on it, and I don't like riddles. Uh, King <laughs> Ragorin, R A G O R I N. Uh, okay. So knowing this, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, since I was I, I watched the episode like two days ago. Um. <laughs> So when, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> that was a sorry. Um, so I know Kor is like clutching something. Um, is, is that holy single? Uh, so the when the door shut, a uh -huh. piece of metal fell out of the bottom lock. Okay. Um, it looks like it had been. Um crudely kind of melted and then just shoved in um make an in if you want to look at that piece of metal yes, give me please. an investigation check please all righty should we be touching cool's metal bits with him being all nine spooky you do have inspiration oh yeah I you do. have like eight uh, inspirations so roll, roll again right roll uh, so yeah, you roll it you roll an advantage and stuff like that uh, <laughs> That's a net one, so no. <laughs> well, you did not net one, which is good. Um, it looks like um, whatever it was was well made. Like, judging from like the different kind of metals to it, it doesn't look like it was a solid piece of metal. Maybe something. Um, you look like it looks like there might be some kind of uh, small gems in it. Uh, not too many, and it looks like a mix of iron and gold okay. uh, but past that you can't you can't really tell um did i somebody had um core's belt lami i oh, have the, yeah. lami's got the belt with uh with the urn on it he, he, he it almost dropped it yeah he almost that's true you did almost it. drop that i hacky um, sacked it it's a good he did. <laughs> um so the, but the it looks it looks metal um and like it was something of a decent, decent value. Okay, I'm I'm gonna pick it up and take it with us. Okay. Um, anything else? Would anyone else like to do anything? Is there anything that can be like wrenched from the walls or any other <laughs> corridors that we could peer down? Um. So or you was guys it just are just a hallway to a door, and that's all it was. Uh, so there's a hallway. You guys came from, if the door is on like the north wall, you guys came from the west side. Um, there's a tunnel leading off uh, to the east, so more uh, direct, like directly opposite the way you came in. Uh, it's that same nice, uh, um, it looks well made, like that dwarven construction. 
Um, and then directly to your south is what looks like a large ramp uh, that as you looked further down the tunnel, it <coughs> looks like it starts to ascend. I like up. So, so, so just to be clear, our, our plan is to go, to go back to the inn now. Well, to the castle, co- at least. Correct, correct. Yes. So we're, we're leaving. I think so. How do we get out? I think the up tunnel. I really don't want to go back the way we came and find all of those little whiskered fellows that I brutally injured their friend. Well, I don't know if he was their friend. They didn't seem to like him. Maybe we could go back that way. Talk to the seer I, I, again. I, 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 don't, I don't like that way. As far uh, as they know, he just left. True. He did get incinerated by a metal dwarf. Oh no, I think the up tunnel is the way to go. I am well versed in up tunnels. Are you sure? I'm going to say I look at him and I just say, You're not throwing me today. (laughs) We will see. Um, Say, if you guys want to just mosey your way up the tunnel. Well, if there's nothing else. Is Thalia done studying the door? Yeah. And do you. I'm going to pick I'm, up Dead Dwarf Boy and take Dead Dwarf I'm Boy with gonna us. I'm going to help pick up Frank. Yeah. Pick up pieces of Frank. Do we have backpacks? Can we put pieces of Frank in backpacks? You should have a backpack. Yeah, you, got, you guys all have like traveler packs and something like Is that. Is that how I carry um, my shit? Oh yeah, backpack. I'm going to get uh, uh, so, so gonna get someone a briefcase of, of carrying. So who... Uh, <laughs> a briefcase of stuff. Uh, so who wants to to carry to carry Frank? And also, Maury, during that break, did you try to put Frank uh, together, or did you just kind of cobble the pieces? And I mean, I put, I tried. I don't think I have enough time though. You should just oh, put in his an legs hour together, and then I mean, stick his head on his hips. <laughs> um, I mean, do you, also do you have mending? I don't have mending. That's my what, that's my problem. What what cantrips are you running? You should firebolt and spare the dying. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch out for cantrip soon. Okay. Um, for for the sake of the narrative, and because you've got Frank, um, like with your with your tools that you can magically create and kind of do whatever, you're able to like put, uh, put a couple pieces on. So if you wanted to like put the head on the torso and have like a three PO kind of style thing where he's hanging onto somebody's back, or if you just want like the legs and the head. And then the torso is getting carried by somebody else. I'm backwards. For, for the I'll, for the sake of the narrative, if you want to do that, I'll uh, I'll put his head together and I'll just kind of like strap it so it dangles off my yeah. backpack. Behind me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, it's uh, what's his name from God of War? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, what a good game. little anyway. tree guy. So so as you guys are, uh, Frank is kind of cobbled together. Um. So yeah, you guys, uh, anything else you guys want to do at the door before yeah. you head up this tunnel? Do any of these names ring a bell, like, whatsoever? Stone Hearth, Machina, Irax, um, Ragarin, oh, yeah. Ragorin, Give me... Ragorin. Ragorin. Give me a history... Really? Give me your history check. Can I assist? Um, yes. If you, if, uh, and if if you guys want to have this conversation as you guys are walking out, um, yeah, he said out. Yeah. We're on the right track. Walking up, sorry, walking, heading down this down this up corridor. Wait, wait, wait. Um, wait. Is it up or down? It is up. Downside it is up. going up. <laughs> it is. It is at an incline. Don't want to check out the rest of the thing. It could just be leading straight to a chest, and there could be fancy things. It's, I'll see on the door. It's not a Pennsylvania uh, illusion uphill, is it? Where it's not actually up; it's down. <laughs> no, it is not a Pennsylvania illusion. You're not in Pennsylvania anymore, Got Toto. It. It's, it's, Pittsburgh has one. <laughs> yeah, Pittsburgh is a lie. Pittsburgh also has the worst interchange in the history of interchanges. Anyway, on the Veterans Bridge. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, DP or yeah, DP and Rachel, if you guys want to. Do the do those sweet sweet history checks? Sure. Um, 
if you guys want to both roll at advantage because you guys are kind of talking talking through it. Um, because I think you guys have the most. I got a sixteen. Uh, twenty-four. Did you get uh? Is that after your plus six DP? Yeah. Yeah. Yikes! I your dice are not happy. With ten. You. Your dice are not happy with you today. Um. So as you guys are walking back, um, kind of pinging ideas off of each other, um, you guys know that this city, the city of Korimvor itself, basically just popped into existence one day. Um, the stories are like the dwarves literally like raised a city from the ground, like it was pre-built, and they just like just lifted, and the whole thing came up. It's sort of the the legend of Korimvor. Very uh, short how they do that. They they built a city and had just a shit ton of dwarves all around the side, and they just kind of lifted, and the whole thing just like. We built this city. That doesn't hey. sound right. <laughs> I'm just thinking that. Um, I don't think that's how so. The work. there there hasn't been a um. There's no real recordings of a city underneath Quorum Four, um, but logically it makes sense that you don't just have a city just appear without there being something underneath it. Um, and King Ragarin, uh, the name kind of tickles something in the back of your head. Um, and Firanax seems because of the way the set, the way the name is, it sounds like a dragon. Um, and there's a long sordid history and in multiple instances where dwarves get run out of their house by a dragon uh, that's like, I want money, and kicks everybody out. Um, sometimes five, the dragon, man. Sometimes the dragon wins, dragons. sometimes the dragon loses. Quick but, question. Well, yes. Once you're done with this. So, I had core marked with Hunter's Mark. That's good for up to 90 feet. I was just going to ask if if I'm able to see if he's chilling on the other side of the door or if he's, he's out of like range. long gone. Okay. He's so when, when, like when he went, you guys saw, and you saw your hunter's mark. It kind of felt it through the wall. You felt it like take a couple of steps and then fall. And it just passed through that 90 feet and out of your range very quickly. Um, um, but yeah, so like, there's there's a couple of historical tidbits and some stories that you've picked up, and also just the historical precedents of dwarves and dragons like the same things but don't get along. Mm -hmm. um, this would definitely be something to talk to the Brotherhood about and get more information, uh, because there there's enough experts in everything um, that they can find something. Uh, what about in Machina? Um, that one... That's going to be either religion or arcana, your choice. Um, 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 I'm not good at either of those. <clears throat> would I know anything being proficient in arcana? Uh, you. Yes. We'll, we'll, we'll jump to you in a second. <laughs> um, so what do you get, Rachel? 14. Machine is really like the big is the giveaway. Uh but it's it's the way he said it, it sounded like a title or a group. Um that's really all you get. That doesn't tell you anything about whatever this this he said it like a proper noun. And that seems interesting, but also, like, again, that's another conversation for the Brotherhood to see yeah. if anyone, if there's anything to that. Um, because machines are, like, it could be anything. Um, so, Robbie, uh, as you hear, yes. Hunter's Mark one. requires a 90-foot range to cast, but it does not require the target to stay within that range for it to continue to work for it is a concentration spell last have i fucked that up i have probably fucked that up one moment please i just I have saw to, i have to send area. it to you on facebook because um, i can't open a mystically market um 
So it it gives you like an idea of where it went, and gives you advantage on uh, wisdom checks to find it. Um. So you so your your general jest is that it went through and went down, and it kept getting further and further and further away. Um. So so there is more down. There's a lot of down. Like out of bow shot down if you're kind of gauging oh, yeah. it off of like what your what your your range would be you're like could i shoot that with my bow like you're and you're pretty comfortable with what your bow shot is you're like i couldn't hit him even if i was oh. like at the top of whatever i could not shoot him with the bow he is down um That'd be hilarious so, if there's not actually a tunnel and he's just down there with his little metal hands just <laughs> just straight down. <laughs> he's not mole. Oh. Um, <laughs> you have disturbed the dirt. <laughs> Good uh, movie. So, um, sorry. Uh, so, Robbie, um, as you're walking, um, you get a like, and that you hear them discussing the dragon and. Um, Ragarin, and you hear them kind of pinging ideas off each other, and none of this is really tripping your trigger or anything like that. Um, are you um, are you behind Mori, or are you just kind of walking in like this cluster? Uh, where where are you? Oh, I lost you. Yeah. I lost audio. Oh. oh, we're good. Okay, uh, in the cluster. You're just kind of in the cluster. Yeah. Uh, so you feel it's almost like that uh, that old, old feeling and you get this quick flash of walking with there's like a quick flash and the people around you, this group you're walking with are suddenly other other war- they're, they're like you they're other machines and you're walking in this same kind of orientation and you feel you get the sensation that something is watching you or like you out of like, you get this feeling that someone is staring at the, at the side of your head. And then in a, in a, another quick little flash, it's gone, but that feeling is still there. It's coming. Uh, it's coming off to your right. Uh, I look off to my right. So sort of sort of off to your side is is Maureen. He he's chatting with Thalia. And Frank's head, which is currently swinging from his belt, has turned and is looking at you. And it has these white lights in its eyes. Oh no. And it looks to you and goes. Not Franklin. He just he just looks at you. And you just hear very quietly. And it's it's in it just it's almost sounds like static. It's a robot. <laughs> but it it says we know who they are. We must talk. And then the lights wink out in the eyes and the head just goes back to what it was doing. Hmm. Um so Mori Give me a real quick perception check at advantage um, to what see if you notice. <clears throat> That's a good question. What color are Frank's eyes normally? Yeah. Or are they just like metal? They're kind of like a dull reddish. Okay. Uh, too they made them like a, a green eyed ladies man. <laughs> They're just like <laughs> lady oh, killing man. robot. <laughs> yep, that's what we need. Sup, ladies? My name's Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Great at dance parties. Um, <laughs> I got a seven as my highest roll. You are having a. You need to get your real dice because Google <laughs> Google dice roll is not is not your friend today. Well, no, it helps with that. A dice, dice box, box from Sheckler Woodworking. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this episode brought to you by Sheckler Woodworking, like all of our episodes, because we don't have a sponsor. Hey, and I don't um, pay anybody. <laughs> You pay me so, with me coming into your you, garage you hear, and touching stuff. Do we want to do that soon, Chris? Touching his wood? <laughs> anyway, anyway. So, <laughs> uh, you hear, you hear just like, 
but it could have been him rubbing up against your pack. It could have been noise from one of the off tunnels. There was a weird noise. You don't know what it was. Um, and as, as you guys continue on up this path, this path is massive. Like this, this tunnel is probably 40 feet wide. And goes on. You've, you've been walking on it eh, probably like 30 minutes. And it's just a real nice gradual incline. And it hasn't narrowed. And keep going and going and going. And all of a sudden it comes, it starts to kind of narrow a little bit and level off. And you come to just a, a stone wall blocking off the the edge of the tunnel and it, it looks like uh just with a real quick look it looks like the sewer brick that you guys have been walking through for most of the afternoon it's just the uh roughly hewn stone and brick that they used when they built the sewers well this is promising i uh i tackle the, the the brick <laughs> Okay, give me an attack roll against the brick. <laughs> All right. Why don't you just headbutt it? Oh, that is a uh, plus my strength modifier. It's, it's an attack roll. That would be it's a an unarmed. Oh wait, attack. no, 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 no. It's yeah, plus nine eight. plus. Oh, nine plus eight. Because it's strength. Because you are proficient in beating the shit out of things with your hands. Okay, so you you get. You get up this head of speed, and it's the same move that he pulled in the forest. He just tucks his shoulder, and he goes, and he goes to dive into it. Uh, are you doing like a like fist out, like you're gonna Hulk bust through it, I'm or are you just gonna, gonna like shoulder? In and hope I don't snap just, my neck. You're just dropping the shoulder into like mm. like a lineman in yeah. uh, this football sport they play in in other places. In Definitely not in this world. Thrash Bowl, yes. Uh, Blood Bowl, actually. We're going to stick with Blood Bowl. That's canon now. There we go. <laughs> um, you drop the shoulder and just like plow through, and there is no resistance. You keep oh running. God. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, give me a deck save. Oh, I know where this is. Oh, no. A deck save? Give me a deck saving throw, my friend. That is a 19. Wow, I'm proud of you. I rolled a 17. I'm so happy because if it's what I think it is, I'll be real sad. Uh, so you you just come <laughs> barreling through and you end up... In the you, you manage to like kind of catch yourself and stop and your feet screech to a halt and you stop sort of balanced on your heels in the room at the bottom of the... Uh, the stairs of learning. I fucking knew it. And apparently, <laughs> you got like you almost tripped over. Uh, what the hell is his name? I wrote it down again. I'm really good at writing shit down. No, not Deke. Uh, you almost trip over the body of Quid. That oh. was. Um, and the rest of you, you just see Ronan like with this, like this, <laughs> almost like a war cry, just Rah! and the noise stops as soon as he passes the wall. But he just like phases through the wall. It is still the same. Can it leave a little? Uh oh. Oh, wow! I thought my description was great. <laughs> oh, He's no. just mad he didn't spot it. Oh, why is my? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, there we go. Oh, now it's bad again. Everything's bad. There we go. Everything is great. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> so the wall is apparently very clearly an illusion. Oh. I was hoping that could be like a Goliath cartoon, like boosh through no, the wall. No, like you just you just like phase through it. Oh. Hmm. Um, um, did did anybody else just see him go through the wall? Oh, absolutely. Can I poke my just my head he back through and be like, I found a thing. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you see, like the, the wall, like it doesn't even ripple. His head just like. Whoop. <laughs> I found a thing. <laughs> I just walk right through. <laughs> yeah, this I'm is 
Yeah, but, and, <laughs> and you guys all recognize that you're back at the uh, at the stairs of or at the the graded area at the base of the stairs of learning. There was a shit um, here this whole time. It definitely wasn't the same way we we took to get there. No. While we're here, I want to check the back of Quid's head. Of Quid's head? Yeah. Okay. Uh, give me a plop. Of the the, the finger things. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, what was Wait. that? An investigation. Uh, investigation, please. Were the stairs of learning with that one night where I didn't play because I was driving home? Uh, it's where the cloak. It's where. The... Yeah, I was gone for that. Okay. Correct. Yes. So we've been here before. And there's Correct. Dead bodies. Yeah. There are several corpses. Yes. Uh, fourteen. Uh, there's no. There are no markings. Um, there's no like finger. There's no holes in the back of of the head. Um, you do, uh, yeah, there's, there's no, aside from what looks like self-induced poison, um, there isn't anything on, uh, on the body. Nothing unusual. This well, guy I just looks like he was aged. inspecting the dwarf boy. I pick him back. <laughs> nah, the, nah, she's, she's looking at Quid, the, uh, the last of the party, or the, one of the, the party members that had been sent down initially. Um. And uh, you hear from near near the stairs of learning. You hear this kind of kind of high pitched squeaking. Um, it, it doesn't sound like anything's in pain. You just hear like this, like this high pitch, like yeah, squeaking is really the best word for it. You thought about making a noise, didn't you? Yeah, you I did, and then I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I don't want it. <laughs> I could tell you were like. You should make the noise. No, I'm not going to do that. Because okay. then you have to edit it out and it's going to be bad. Just pick the cat up and go, meep, meep. And see if they don't... Just squeeze, no. squeeze your I'll lose a finger. See what happens. Um, You're 16 pounds, I'll lose a finger. We already looted this area. So Correct. Up, up, up the stairs we go. That Bojangle is at the top of the stairs. Uh, as you guys, uh, As you guys get closer to the... Uh, Oh, no. Get closer to the stairs. Uh, there's enough light coming down the stairs of learning that you see a kind of familiar looking, uh, familiar looking rat sitting on the stairs, uh, kind of just like preed in his whiskers. No, 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 oh. smaller, like actual rat sized rat. Oh. He's kind of preed in his whiskers and like petting his head, and he looks kind of waves. I wave back. <laughs> Goodbye, Ratatouille. That's all I can imagine is Ratatouille, whatever you describe him. <laughs> He's just like this cute little rat, and he like turns and he just starts kind of scampering up the stairs. Oh, wait. I run back down the stairs and I yank off one of the toenails of the dead people. Oh, and I give it to the rat. He's like, <laughs> oh, is he gone? Mr. Bojangles just turned out is already up the stairs. Oh, like, he's right. going. Um, oh. thank you for, for retconning that because <laughs> <laughs> nobody likes that. Oh, oh. now you have a toenail. Mm -hmm. Um, dead man's toenail. He, he, you guys make your way up the stairs of learning. Um, Why? and you guys come back to, uh, to the central cistern. Um, and there is a rope hanging from the uh, what looks like the grating. There's a rope just kind of dangling down. Um, and there's a couple of city guardsmen standing in the cistern. A couple of them have torches in there. They're looking around. And Mr. Bojangles like scampers up the stairs and starts squeaking. And you guys see a familiar tiefling come over. He's like, oh, oh, come over here. He picks up. He reaches down a hand and Mr. Bojangles runs up his arm and says, oh, yes, yes, friends. Hi, friends. Uh, you you all seem mostly okay. How'd, uh, how'd everything go? Uh, and he's like kind of glancing over at the guards, just kind of nervous. How'd, you, how'd everything go? Did you Did you find... We, we found him, and then he beat us up, and we beat him up, and then he went into a door, and then we came back here, because we can't get the door to open. Actually, none of us tried to open the door. I just realized that now. Uh, have you talked to them? And I point over at the guards. 
them. Um, uh, kind of. They uh, I didn't talk to them much. They they asked me they asked me a lot of questions, and, and I don't like questions. They they said they were looking for people, and and you guys are people. Are are you the ones they're looking for? Can I? Can I, I go, go straight to the guards? Uh, so one of the guards, they they, um. One of them has like a slightly more impressive plume on his head. Oh, it's um, plume man! This is a, this is a different. This is not plume guy. Oh, from is this earlier. a blue plume guy? This is not blue plume guy. Oh, this is red plume. Ooh, red plume. This is red, red versus guy. blue plume. Is this a higher level plume or? A <laughs> don't spoil my jokes. Lower lower level plume. I don't know. Can we tell uh, by the height of plumage? <laughs> uh, plumage. give me give me a perception. Nice. Actually, give me an insight check. Uh, what does insight do? Uh, that's a two. Uh, <laughs> it's a plume. Uh, wow, your your thought is like, man, do all of these do all of these guards people have feathers in their heads? <laughs> How does this shit work? Um, and Thalia, having spent a little bit of time here, you know that. The officer in charge usually has a differently colored plume. Uh, this guy is probably like a mid, like a mid tier, um, middle manager basically. Um, and he, uh, as you come over, he's uh, he's like, "Oh, there you are. We've been You're looking. Right? Wait, weren't you in in the basement? Like, yes, and uh, like two, like a couple of hours ago." How yes. did you get here? I'm going to yell just an interject immediately and just kind of yell, What year is it? I'm going to start walking to the gods and just bop Deke on the head. Deke, like, if you, you bump him on, you kind of tap him on the head, but because he's so small, um, you absolutely just, like, knock him over. <laughs> but he, like, tucks and rolls. Uh, and gets right back up, and Mr. Bojangles is like just rides the whole ride. Um, and the the guard like looks over at you and then looks back at Thalia with this kind of like, Is, is he okay? Is like, are they, are they okay? All right, How? so besides the tiefling, I, I think he lives down here. I don't want to know. Uh, the rest of them are with me. It's a complicated story. I will tell you though that you might want to check security in uh is it the mayor? Mayor? Mayor, mayor yes. Mayor? Yeah. You might want to check security in the mayor's. There's a hidden basement which a metal dwarf dug a tunnel through the foundation into the sewer. So you might want to work on putting that up. Uh security hazard, all that. Uh yeah. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> uh, listen, whatever. Not that's that's above my my it, pay grade. Yeah. That's however, that's I since you you and and him over there are the only ones down here who seem to speak common. Were there any signs of the other group? Because we we were sent out to find uh, the initial like. There was apparently a party of adventurers in the sewers a couple of weeks ago, and that one, any points over at Lami, because that one seems to not understand, it doesn't know where he is. Do you know anything about the first group that came down here? Oh, yes. Uh, they, they, They're they, dead. They, they had a slight weapons malfunction. <laughs> this chorus of, oh no, they're, they're super dead. <laughs> like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk right next to her wearing the trench coat. Uh, and as quietly as I think is quietly possible, just in her ear, do you think we should tell them about the possibility of a dragon? Maybe not him. Uh, oh, uh, we'll get yeah. there, though. Uh, in. Uh, hey, anyway, I get real quick, Robbie. Yes. <laughs> how, how quiet does Robbie think this conversation should be? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, 67 decibels. Pretty much. <laughs> like, 
he, he wants to make sure that you are heard, so you're... He, he stage whispers, but actually, like, stage whispers. Okay. Um, so you see, you see this guard, and he goes, Did you say dragon? I did not say anything. Oh, yes, yes dragon, this one right here, and I point at Lamy. Maybe. It's okay. He he hasn't had ale for a while. He's a little he's a little kooky on all the poo fumes, if you know what I mean. It really though. How Regardless, you, how Captain, long have we yes, been down here? Has anybody been I, keeping track? Yes, we unfortunately found the first set of adventurers who were, you know, sent down here. They are the tunnel we just came through. You know which one that is, right? Mm, yeah, we're all the we're all the shits flowing. Yeah, correct. Down that tunnel. Yeah. Is, is, Stairs, literally, just keep following the stairs. I'm and then learning. <laughs> you just hear Deke in the background. It's like, yes, the stairs learning. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and at the bottom, we'll find a cistern. Um, and we have found the remains of three of the adventuring party down there. I think it would, might be worthwhile to retrieve their bodies, and I will report the rest of our findings to. The proper channels. Mm. Well, that's three quarters of my job done, and another job I wasn't paid to do, but I'm sure I'll be able to get some money out of that. Um, so, thank you for your uh, thank you for the in for the the information that you've given us. We will be certain to make sure that everything is taken care of with them. Um, if you want to want to speak to the mayor, um, the quickest way up is this rope. Um, it does most of the climbing for you, so you don't have to worry about that, ma'am. Um, or if you want to enjoy your leisurely walk through the sewers and tell you what, if you show me the security breach, uh, I'd love to be able to bring this up to uh, take this up my proper channels to make sure that breach is, is sealed. All right. Um, I guess I'll kind of, I don't know. Would, would you rather take care of your first mission and then we'll check out the security breach because I think I'm going to be tied up at the mayor's mansion for a while anyway, so you'll probably find me there. Mm. Or do you want to check the security breach first and then... Let's let's get out of the sewers because, frankly, the smell is giving me a headache. I'd like let's to get, get out of the sewers. I'd like to get out. I'm going to grab onto the rope right now. Okay. Um, <laughs> so Lami's you, already out. Lami, Lami grabs onto the rope and the rope <laughs> coils around your wrist and up your arm and sort of break like it braces against your chest mm -hmm. and you basically like because you grabbed it it basically supermans you out of the sewer grate You're like, for, for no reason at all I'm just gonna start, I'm just gonna start singing uh, 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 come with me <laughs> it's much quicker than that <laughs> Um, with me and you'll be in my world. Come with me, boom, <laughs> and you just get like pulled up. And as as you just, you guys just see this dragon, just like with his hand around this rope, like Mary Poppins in a place where Mary Poppins exists, just like, <laughs> and he's just out into out of the sewers. Um, and the the captain just goes, God, I hope they throw it back down. And then the rope trickles back down. He goes, Oh, thank God. <laughs> And he goes, men, bodies are that way. Go sort it out. Don't fall into the swirling pool of doom. The the what now? There's a swirling pool of poo down there, Just... and there are big fishies in it that I'm assuming would want to eat. You mean the pit of despair? Yes, the pit of despair. Very he good. like this. Ooh, me or the little weird one? <laughs> or the big weird one, which is me. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. All of you, thank you for uh I your serv thank you for your service to the to the mayor and to the city. Um give me a performance check on the curtsy, please. Um he goes, if you would all mind uh taking this rope and being interviewed by my colleagues, uh we will begin collecting the uh the evidence and the bodies of the previous adventurers um ma'am i would like i have a few questions for you if if you don't mind when we get upstairs of course, a three Captain. a three uh you curtsy and 
all but like your foot kind of slips and you like take a quick dunk in the poo just like up to your ankle um you keep the shoe which is nice but you have a you have a poo shoe now (laughs) (laughs) so you guys no it smells way worse (laughs) Uh, so you guys all all take the rope up um can i can i shout your plume is on backwards as i go up. as you said uh sure and he's like he he's like He's like, but gnomes. Like, you very faintly in the distance here and being like, my poop's not on backwards, you're on backwards. <laughs> um, so you guys all, you pop out of this, this sewer grate. And for those of you following along at home, let's take a look at this map that I made. Because I am proud of it. Uh, open link. Uh, oh God, you guys... Me put in maps... Yes. Uh, so you guys have popped up in that large open square up in Greymire, um, which is in the, the, the northwest portion of the city. I'm going to dump the link right there so you guys can open it up on your PCs. So yeah, you guys have popped out in like the center of that square in Greymire. What, what was in that square again? Uh, that square, ye, this one just looks like a like a town market um, mm. that can be cleared away for performances and like a fairground almost. Um, hence the enormous sewer grate and sort of main dumping ground of this portion of the city. Excellent. Kind of all all of that kind of flows through there. Yeah. Um, and so as you guys all come up, uh, the captain has two or three guards come and sit down and have a have a quick interview with you. Um, which unless you guys have anything specific, I'm, I'm going to assume since we are all seem to be a rather trustworthy group of people, um, you guys are going to give them whatever your quick summary of events was down there. Um, if there's anything else you guys want to say, um, cause I feel like RPing the same story with seven different people getting interviewed by the same Scottish sounding guard is going to get real boring. Uh, you could have seven different same sounding Scottish guards. Yes. Yes. They're they all they they're all siblings, basically. Um I so, like so you guys kinda have... that Rachel's frozen. Correct. Her laptop uh, crashed. Correct. Oh, no. She'll be back. <laughs> um so and as you guys are uh sort of in this city square, there's a large like you guys have been you're in like a court a, a cordoned off area of the square there's a lot of foot traffic and a lot of people are giving you weird looks um mostly because you reek like sewer yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna look at the guards and i'm gonna i'm gonna ask uh i I need i need directions to the the best blacksmith in town oh you (coughs) you'll you'll want to go to the range sir but i'm afraid i can't let you go until we've finished we finished asking you these questions. But I need to go right now. No, oh, you don't. Well, I'm afraid you'll all be free to go when we're done answering questions. When you're done with our questions. I would, I, I would I, like to raise my hand sheepishly to the guard. Uh, would you... There are, there, there's two guards, two or three guards interviewing each of you. Ronan, you got five. Oh, okay. <laughs> you have five guards. Four of them have gray plumes, and one of them has, like, a pink plume. <laughs> one... Do you know where one could like wash off once we're all done? And two, where do you get your plumes? Because I really like them. They they all kind of look at each other and they're like, "Well, these are oh, these are the one with the pink plume." Kind of like it's it's hard to puff up your chest in plate mail, but somehow this guy manages to give that effect of just like, "Huh, well, yes, well, we uh, these are standard issues, sir. Standard issue of the city guard. You only get one of your in the city guard." Oh. Yes. Would you like to join the city guard? Here's a recruitment form. Would you like to join the city guard? I will take the form and I will say I will have to get back to you. Congratulations. And he just takes and he like slaps you on the chest. And there's like, uh, you read common, right? Uh-huh. So it just says trainee city guard. <laughs> and it's like, he's like, you're in. Congratulations. <laughs> and he, he goes, and he goes, Captain. Captain, I got the biggest one. 
I'm just going to look at him and so, go. So, Rachel, uh, basically what you missed it is Chris got drafted. Yep. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I imagine Wonderful. it's like Patrick. Just um, like, what just happened? I uh, I walk over to no, this my Patrick. condolences. I say, God bless you. Um, the the guardsman who applied the the training sticker to Ronan kind of looks for a second, and he looks real real close at Robin. He's like, I haven't seen one of you in. My granddaddy told me stories about you. He might want a plume as well. I haven't seen one of you. Ever. <laughs> He's like... <laughs> <laughs> He's like... But, but, I, I thought they decommissioned all of you. What are you doing around? Where they find, did they find you in the sewers? Are you hiding in the sewers? Above That's a good place. the sewers. A dwarf dug into them. Dwarf, you say? What? <laughs> Captain! <laughs> like, Captain's just, like, riding on a pillow. Just going, like, <laughs> you just see, it's weird. It's like, it's almost like Red versus Blue, where you don't see the, the faces. You just see, like, the body language. You see this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lieutenant. Yes, you have the biggest one, Lieutenant. Yes. Lieutenant, why are you talking to the robot? He's like, well, he's he's one of the Mark One, sir. He's what Mark One? He hands the the quill and paper off to to a scribe who's just like uh, kind of juggling a bunch of different things. And he comes and goes, Lieutenant, we're here to do a job. So do the job. Don't. Nope, nope. I don't care. Did you get a statement? Let him go. He's What's, like, but, 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 sir, nope, no, no, you got the biggest one. That's your win for today. You get one. I'm going to look at the captain and go, I said I would consider it. Does this mean I get a plume for considering it? Did you take the paperwork? He said it was a flyer. Lieutenant, and he goes, he, he has to be, he has to, he wanted a plume, and I told him this is how you get a plume, and so he wants a plume. <laughs> May I see that paperwork, sir? I hand it back to him. Hands it back. <laughs> he goes, he takes the flyer and he just like tears it, and <laughs> the lieutenant's like, oh, but I wanted the big one. He goes, Allow me to apologize for my uh, hasty underling. He does seem he's hasty, yes. He's, he's eager. Eager is a good word. And he kind of like, he's like, he pulls you aside. He goes, if you want to join the guard, there is, there are openings that we can, we can make for a man of your talents, but I want you to do it of your own volition and not because of well, just, you know, we want it to be your choice. Not just for a way to, you know, raise money or go to, go to the, uh, the Scholar's Walk or whatever. They're, this is your choice and you need to make a choice that's right for you. Well, that seems quite fair. Um, forgive him. He's trying to make it, he's trying to make his quota for the, for the week and it's, it's been rough on him. Oh, okay. Am I still carrying oh. around the dead dwarf, by the way? <laughs> you are absolutely still... <laughs> okay. No one has noticed uh, because of the fact that they have just pulled this motley crew of, like, hoodlums. Really foul-smelling hoodlums. They actually can't smell the body over the rest of the sewage. Nice. Um, as, as he's saying this, I just kind of, like, plop the, the dwarf body <laughs> on the ground. Like, boy, he was heavy. <laughs> the captain's the captain like... Um, is that uh, yours? Uh, have we not gotten this far in the story yet? Lieutenant! <laughs> yes, sir! Yes, 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 sir! Oh, a corpse, sir! You've killed him! And to think I almost had you on my squad. I can't believe I trusted you! And the captain's like, Lieutenant, go over there. That's, that, that's in order. Get over there. 
He's like, but, <laughs> but, but sir, this is a murder. <laughs> he puts his hand, like the captain puts his hand over <laughs> his gauntleted hand over the lieutenant's face. And she goes, like grabs him by the helmet. and goes, stop talking. Go over there. Wrangle civilians, chase cats. I don't care. Get over there. Jeez. Uh, yeah, we, we found him like that, I swear. He looks over at Thal and goes, I assume this has something to do with the dwarf it's that a was long mentioned. Story. Like, like, like I said, we found him like that. <laughs> well, we and you carried him. him out of the sewers. No, no, not we. He, he I carried know. him out of the sewers. As a collective... You in came his in. defense, there may be some evidence that will lead us to what exactly this dwarf is carried up, you know, up in. Hmm. Well, I suppose this changes things a little bit. And he turns and he just puts two fingers into the helmet and whistles. And Ooh, I two guardsmen. Try. <laughs> uh, give me. <laughs> <laughs> is that performance? I think that's performance. Can Give I me a performance stop this? Can I just grab his hand and be like, <laughs> "Yes, yes, please, for the love of God"? <laughs> I thought you were gonna put your fingers in his helmet. You are keeping. <laughs> yeah, I want to try this. Lamy from his beer. I, I I I agree with that, Leia. Do I get to roll like a strength something to see if I can pull her? <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> If you want to break her fingers, go for it. I don't want to break her fingers, gonna, but I want to like gonna, pull away. You're going to. I'm gonna slowly wander. That is a two in search of a beer, um, which I guess so, would be a seven. So as as she reaches up and is like, no, no, stop it. Uh, <laughs> two guards come over with uh, what looks like what looks like a paddy wagon. Um, with like a separate trailer um that's just low and wooden um and looks like it only hit, really has one entrance um on the back and the captain's like well i suppose we should just go up to the mayor we were going to take anyone we found in to the the godhouse for questioning but this seems to be infinitely more complicated than i would have liked so come with me. We'll go see the mayor. We'll get this sorted. Can we splash water on us first? As we it go. Was... Like, there's not... We'll stop at the stables and if, you, if you're if you alright with it, they'll, uh, they can hose you down and try to deal with more of the smell. If that's, if that's quite alright. Uh, well, let's just do it quickly. Me. Um, and he's like, all right. So, and he goes to hop into the wagon and he goes, ah, I suppose I have to leave someone in charge. He goes, Lieutenant. You just nope, see like nope. <laughs> the pink plume pops up of a, out of a crowd of people. And yes, sir. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? He goes, Lieutenant, you're in charge until we get back. Understood. He goes, oh, yes, sir. It will be the most efficient questioning and body retrieval. Yes, excellent. I will, I will do my best, sir. And he pops off. So he goes, yes, Lieutenant. Thank you for all of your dedication to the order. Now, if you don't mind. He goes, oh, yes. And he trots off somewhere. He goes, if everyone doesn't mind hopping in or on or around the wagon. Um, the wagon That's seat fine. six. Yeah, unfortunately, the back wagon is also for the corpses we expected to find. So it might not be the roomiest, but if you get tired of walking, you can ride there. I'll just walk. I'm Very good, walk. sir. Um, all right. And so you all pile onto the wagon um, and take a take a jaunty ride. <laughs> Bring out your death. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, it's it's about a it's it's not at the pell mell pace that Ergen drove you through the city earlier. Um, it's also through what's would be considered a sketchier neighborhood. Um, so as you guys kind of pull through, this will take probably fifteen to twenty minutes. Do you guys just want to skip ahead, or are there any scenes you guys want to do while you're all sitting in the wagon? Can I uh, 
turn to Thrall. Um, do you remember what happened to our wagon? I think Ronan was the last one to have it. He was Driving pulling it last time I remember. Building? Yeah, it's inside a building somewhere. Mm. We should we should probably find that at some point. And we gotta check on the horses. I wonder if they're still in the building. After they said that, Lightthar's eyes just go. <laughs> like I freak out. Horses. I freak out for a second. Like, oh my god. Uh, for. I'm like, <laughs> Uh, okay, so so we'll we'll cut ahead to you guys pull up to the stables, and there's a couple of uh, stable hands that are, you know, they come out and they're taking care of the horses, whatever. Um, and as you guys pop out of, come out of the paddy wagon, um, they see like, oh, cool, here here's a wood elf. Oh, oh, that's cool. We get it. We get a fair number of elves. Oh, there's a. Oh shoot, do you see the dragon board? Oh, he's in. And you hear like whispers. Oh, it's, oh he's in there. Oh man, he's a have you seen his armor? Look at that armor. So shiny. And then Ronan or sorry, you guys weren't Ronan and Lummy are taking up the rear. And so like, whoa, there's a look at that. He's huge. Look at that guy. He's massive. Oh, look at the dragon. He, is that that's oh man. Oh man, I wonder how he got that armor. I wonder who he, wonder where he got it. As you guys come out of the wagon, there's Lithar. So like he kind of gracefully steps out. Of this wagon, like, oh man, oh, I haven't seen. There's not, a, there's not a ton of elves around here. They, a thrall <laughs> steps out, Your big hair flip. majestically. <laughs> uh, they're, they're like, whoa, they're like they're, they're enraptured. And at this point, they've like stopped petting the horses entirely. They're just watching guys pop out of this wagon. Uh, Thalia pops out. They're like, whoa. In that like that glazed over look that like thirteen year old boys have when they see a pretty woman, like they're just their brain turns off. Movie. Whoa! <laughs> Wait, that's supposed to. Hi, stop Pierre. Hi, Leon. <laughs> the, oh, hi, Lady Thalia. How, how was your trip? Could have been better. How are you, boys? I get. And we're 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 good. There's a there's a there's a lot of people here. Like, and Thrall steps out of the wagon, and they're just like, "Wow!" <laughs> Maury and Frank pop up. They're like, "Whoa! He's got a cool little robot head!" Whoa! <laughs> and Robbie steps out, <laughs> and their draws just drop. <laughs> and they're like. Got do you think he do you think he can talk i don't know his mouth it doesn't look like his mouth moves can he do you think he can hear us i don't know well if you if you talk quieter he won't hear us this is pull this is again that same kind of stage whisper where they're like they're trying to be secretive but they're 13 and idiots um they're they're so, good kids they're good kids but man they're stable hands for the rest of their lives i i turned to them <laughs> and like my first time meeting everybody Hello, my name is Robbie. <laughs> they book it. They just turn and run. I was, hope, I was hoping you were going to say they shit themselves. Like, <laughs> they, like uh, verbally. There was like <laughs> that moment, one of them, like they turn and book it away. And one of them actually like takes a corner and like stumbles around the corner and they're just like disappear in a cloud of dust. And the captain's just like, someone needs to teach those boys some manners, <laughs> some goddamn self control. All right. And gestures all of you over to a, a bucket with a hose, and he's like, and this is all I've, I've got some brushes, some clean water. Uh, there's some towels over here. Take some time, clean yourselves up. Uh, we'll we'll wait outside, and then we'll take you in to see the mayor. Uh, I believe, and he pulls out. Um, it looks like a pocket watch, but he pops open the top, and it's a sundial. <laughs> He's like, "Nice, uh, mayor's got a meeting. Fancy. You should have about uh, 
about a half an hour until until he's ready. So take your time, get cleaned up. Um, <clears throat> we'll be outside. And he and his guardsmen turn and kind of leave you guys in uh, in the, the mostly empty stables. The horses have kind of gotten their own stalls, but there's if there's stalls available for those of you them for those of you who want privacy. Is this the only stable? <laughs> Like, is this the stables Our, of the whole place? This is uh, this is one of the one of the main stables. This is uh, there's this is a big enough complex that there's there's a stable on sort of the uh, um, on so this, either this side of of the building. Stable. Correct. Okay. Your stable is back at the Twist and Shout. Um, <laughs> however, there is a cart in this particular stable that looks very familiar to to two of you. Um, Apparently, they hauled the wagon out of the corridor where they left it uh, and brought it into the stables. Yeah. Are the horses in it? Can I make a perception check? Oh my god, how do you not remember about the horses? Uh, The horses are back at the Twist and Shout. Oh, so they're not here. Correct. Because Ronan grabbed the wagon and Urgen was like, drive! And so you drove through the city Uh, and through the hallways. So they had like... We'll do we'll do like a brief interim scene where like oh I wonder how it got here and flashback to Ergen and the mayor standing there and there's like 19 dudes gathered around like pushing this wagon through this hallway and they're just like how did he make it look so easy he's such a big dude I know right anyway so we'll, we'll you guys all get cleaned up um and you guys pop out and the captain. I was like, oh, I, you, well, you all certainly smell better than you did a couple of minutes ago. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. That, that was the goal. Um, and he's like, and since I heard that a few of you like your ales, uh, and he reaches back and pats a quarter keg. I'm he's, like, I had, immediately. he's like, I had this bro. Oh, <laughs> oh all right. You're, you're all thirsty. I understand. Uh, <laughs> right. So that was, that was for all of you. I break I'll have something else brought up. Uh, I'll actually, I'll send, uh, I'll send them. I'll send, uh, I'll send them. The mayor's man servant will take care of you once we get inside. (laughs) Um, and so you guys all kind of, kind of mosey your way in. Um, and the captain brings you to a sort of a sitting room through, through these large ornate hallways with tapestries and, uh, sconces with torches in them you know the usual like castle regalia um this all seems very clean and well kept and he brings you into this sitting room um that has chairs for everybody um and he's like well if you wait here i will allow i will alert uh the mayor's manservant and he will be by with more drinks and uh the mayor will be along shortly when he's out of his meeting um and for what it's worth thank you for your your help with the the other matter um and uh, i'll be oh oh shoot and i absolutely forgot and he picks up a small blue bell that's on the counter and he rings it and a couple of seconds pass and a man walks in in dark blue robes um with a uh seven pointed star pin and he goes yes captain the captain's like hello yes <laughs> hi <laughs> I require your assistance in a very simple matter um, these what what do you what do you call yourselves that's a good question um, I, I call myself Lommy personally this collection of individuals uh has some information for the mayor um and a part of that information is uh dead <laughs> and he goes oh yes would you like that revivified sir or would you like to keep it uh as is and the captain's like um as, as is good yes revivified. yes, yes. Sounds good. as as is 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 fine for now He's like, mm, yes, sir. Mm, very good. And he re- walks over and just like, hey, uh, are you still carrying the dead dwarf? Mm-hmm. He goes, ah, uh, yes. Mm. Ooh, that's not some rather messy one you have. Very well. And he just takes his two fingers and he 
like kind of runs them down as if he was closing the dwarf's eyelids, um, except they're already closed. And there's a faint glow that kind of suffuses the entire body and then sinks into it. He goes, that should prevent any additional damage or decay for, for the time being. Uh, any further tests will require that spell to be removed and other ones to be applied, but uh, I, will, I will eagerly await the next summons. Is there anything else I can do for you? And he looks kind of around the room at everybody. <laughs> no? Gonna, do you gonna, know Gerard? Keep drinking my ale. <laughs> Gerard? Unfortunately, yes. Oh. I do know Gerard. You don't like Gerard? I love Gerard. He brought me my thing, and I whip out my pike, and I'm like, look how cool it is. And I put it back. Yes. Is there anything magical I can do for you? Oh, oh. Um, uh, yeah, y- yes. Something cool. <laughs> mm. Yes. <laughs> But useful. Cool and useful. I, uh... <clears throat> I look at him and point to the slightly decayed piece of armor that that little creature took a chunk out of and go, Can you fix this? Ooh, ooh, do me too. Walks over. He goes, Hmm. Hmm. What did this to you? And he looks and sees your uh, nameplate, sees your designation. He goes, what did this to you, R66Y? What happened? Uh, do, did I actually remember what that monster was like as a character? Or know um, what that monster was as a character? Yes. Okay. Uh, you remember from... There was a point you you get another one of those quick flashes and you remember seeing thousands of them running towards you and seeing what had happened when they got to you or when they got to uh, others like you. Okay. Uh, Uh, There are rust monsters in the sewer. They have attacked. Really? Big stinky bugs. We may need <laughs> the, the for the first time you see this light of this is the first time that this wizard has not looked bored in his time there. And these like slate gray eyes kind of perk up. He's like, Really? Where? Where in this where in the sewers are these rust monsters? I'm gonna point down. Uh, with as precise mechanical detail as I can, uh, I give him the exact path we took. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so you're you're kind of running it through like a you're giving it to him. In how? Um, you're giving it to him in basically cubits. Um, yeah, it's it's a very outdated unit of measurement, but it's uh, but it's working. Um. And so he's like, well, that's a little archaic, but useful. Thank you. And he reaches out a hand and sort of runs it across where the the rust monster took a chunk out of you and patches that right up. And you get your your max hit point back. Congratulations. Do do me too. And my sword. Both, please. Please. Very good idea. Are you expecting to fight, sir? Not right now, but later. Then I will repair it later. No, no, now, now. And he takes a st- he takes a step back, and just goes, "If that will be all." And no, just, now I like <laughs> now. There's Wait. there's a quick flash. Oh, sorry. Did you have something was, like that? I was gonna ask, what race is this? Is this just a human? This is just a human. This is just like a vanilla. Like he just looks like a stereotypical wizard like long white beard gray eyes the the hat is more wide brimmed than it is tall and floppy um think like uh for your final fantasy nerds think like the uh like the black 
the black mage hat where it's just like there's just this big floppy hat but he's just the stereotypical like court wizard uh, um, i'm gonna i'm gonna look over to any city guard next to me and say uh, I'd, I'd like to speak to a manager please i am not happy with how this establishment has been treating <laughs> oh so so Lithar, did you have anything to say before you before you do poof? yeah i was just i was gonna <laughs> before he poops i was gonna ask him like do you know where my that old elven friend has gone because i honestly can't remember his name for life of me right uh, now i know it's an o and it's pissing me off uh, it's it's it, it's it's a u Ergen. Uh, it's Ergen. And, uh, Ergen. um he goes oregon Ergen, yeah. Ergen is with the mayor at present in the council meeting that I am unfortunately not invited to. Well, why not? My Thar just it, goes, Sounds like we should be there. I think we should head on up. The council meetings are not to be disturbed in sec. In sep and takes a step back and kind of composes, composes himself. <laughs> The council meetings are not to be disturbed unless in times of war. Are well, we at war? Yes. No. With whom? <laughs> Our own selves. With Pothromax. <laughs> and he, at, at the mention of the dragon's name, he turns and goes, Where did you learn that name? Uh, it was in a stupid riddle. It was, it was on Where? the door. The door down under the, under the under the thing. Big door, dumb riddle, hard to open. Wouldn't recommend it. Not a very fun trip. Six six Y. Where is this door? And you, this his voice <laughs> rings with like. Um, is this the wizard or the captain? This is the wizard. Oh, I thought the wizard yeah. left. No, no, uh, Lythar had a question before he poofed, and I'm uh, allowing that retcon because uh, of lag. Okay. Uh, requisition. Uh, rank. What? What do you mean, rank? Tell me where the what? door is. What? Requisition. Rank. Please respond. I, I, uh, Court Wizard of Korimvor. Unacceptable designation. Strongest <laughs> Avenger. <laughs> Machine is malfunctioning. What? What do you know Point. of this name? He points to Robbie. Speak. Give me a wisdom save. He is attempting to command you. He's doing a Jedi mind trick. This this is less Jedi mind trick and more just like enforcing his will. Um, I will give you advantage because you have been drilled to not give away, like because of your background. Oh no, uh, that is a seven total. Is it, oh, wisdom save ten. Ten. Okay. Um, yeah, unfortunately. I'll tell you everything. Uh, <laughs> um. Yeah, uh, you you did not succeed, <laughs> and and my voice drops back down to that octave, questing the rank, and I finish telling him from the area where we fought the Ross monsters how to get to the door. Mm -hmm. He goes, "Thank you." Now, if there's nothing else I can help you with, do you know I, this I, name I, of I, Fothromax or whatever the word was? I still have not been uh, assisted. Uh, ooh, I gotta look at Commander. I'm, ask, I'm asking the wizard this. this. This name seems to have spooked you. Why? That is none of your concern. That is a matter of ancient history. See, not important. That All is that's important <laughs> is that I am made shiny and new again. Well, you were, you were, sounded like you were kind of scared of it, and you pointed your finger at my robot friend and gave him a waggle. I am a student of history, and that name has a great deal of history to it. But where can I find out history of this name? Can't you give me a short rundown? He goes, it's, It would be far too complicated for your simple mind to understand. I have a common mind, thank you very much. He, 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 it's obvious he's scared of this thing, just let him alone. 
<laughs> he looks between the teeth and goes, I'm not going to, I'm not falling for that. He walks over falling and does a real terror. quick, does a real quick mending on your armor and your sword. Um, also, Thrall, uh, when he is like, it is no concern of yours, you feel your ring heat up a little bit. You, you, he's definitely not a, not being a hundred percent honest with you. Oh yeah, no, he like he's. It's not quite as overt as some of the lies you've picked up in the past, but there's definitely like he's. There's a lot of half truths in what he's saying, but not a lot of. Uh, not a lot of honest truths. Thank um, you for making me shiny, but you are obviously scared of these things. Uh, give me a perception check. Or actually, no, I lied. Insight. Ooh. Uh, I 15. Hmm? 15. Oh, uh, throw. I was just, can I assist him since I can, uh, since I feel that he's not telling the truth? Um, because an in, an insight check is like your personal guy. Like, or do you, would you want to lean over and be like, just like whisper in, in, or just say like he's lying to you? Because they're yeah, like, essentially. okay, this guy's full of shit. Pretty much. So, so Thrall like kind of looks up from his sword and he goes, "He's lying to you." Uh so yeah, you can roll that at advantage, Lummy. No change, still a 15. <laughs> Perfect. Consistency <laughs> is key. Um, he's... If Thrall hadn't said that he was lying, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have picked up on it. But he's definitely, like, your, your kind of your gut instinct is, yeah, that the name... The name got a reaction out of him. Mm -hmm. And he's nervous... But there are enough different kinds of nerves, and like he, he, there's a, suddenly a very big feeling that he wants to be anywhere else but here. I'm gonna pick on him. I'm, I'm gonna Wait, go. Did, did I'm gonna, Thrall I'm gonna... whisper to him, or did he say like out loud? For all I said it out loud. Yeah. Uh, so uh, can I say in Orcish to Thrall? Yeah, this dude's definitely lying. <laughs> sure, you can. You talking is a free action. Oh. You speak Orcish and you, you hate, hate orcs. orcs and you can yep. speak Orcish? Uh, <laughs> yep. Be close uh, to what you hate. Anyway, anyway I'm gonna <laughs> pick on, I'm gonna pick on the wizard and go, hey, hey, you're afraid of details. <laughs> Ain't he um <laughs> huh. He's he's gonna look at you. He's gonna look you dead in the eyes. And he goes. I might be afraid. But that's because I know what he can do. Well, tell us what and he, he takes is. a step and disappears. And just like takes a step and he steps backwards and just kind of fades away as he steps away. Well, he was a dick. <laughs> and he, the captain. He, he obviously can't do that much. And the captain's like, <sighs> God, he's an asshole. Yes, he I is. And then. I don't like him. Um. And we can pause there for a break. Um, Welcome back, Rachel. DP's, <laughs> DP's about to get a phone call. Um, um, so that'll, that'll break. Uh, we'll br let's come back at 9.55. Uh, Rachel, I can give you a quick catch-up. Deal. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. It's no, you're good. Um, so yeah, if everybody wants to break, we'll be back oh. in 12 minutes. Boom. Hello. So, welcome back. <laughs> um, so when last we left off, um, the wizard, who was kind of a dick, uh, has yeah, just teleported from the room. Um, just kind of like, kind of like David Bowie in Labyrinth, where you're just like, <laughs> uh, kind of poops away. David Bowie um, was in Labyrinth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't seen that movie. Can I kick in, somebody from this call? I think so. Real quick. <laughs> Don't give me that power. Um, so uh, the captain 
and his uh the two guardsmen have left the room with uh have left the room by more mundane means and have you y'all are sitting in this in this room kind of together um either quietly in your own thoughts or if there's any conversations based on what just happened um, um have i give oh. have i shown the captain where that security breach is uh no uh, he is uh cuz the security breach you have to go into the council chamber oh um, right got it I and heard so. dirty breaches. I wasn't sure what was happening. I was like, "What?" Okay. Just gonna, uh, the, dirty, the, the dirty, the dirty, the dirty, the dirty breach is a is a secret is a bar that you guys didn't stop at. Um, <laughs> uh, what was that wizard's name? Um, the wizard's name. You don't. Have, he did not give his name. Yeah, he did. Uh, Oh no, he didn't. He I look at the captain title. and I go, okay. "What was that wizard's <clears throat> name?" <sighs> oh, <laughs> I just, I just had. I literally just told Rachel, and I can't find it. Atronics, um, Atr- Atronics the Great. He, he sounds. Uh, his name is a dickish name too. It, the Great is not his last name, nor is it a title. Self-given. It is. It is the perks of being, you know, the archmage of the city council. Is you can give yourself a title and a rank. He went with the great. I wrote. You know, that's not pretentious. Ar- Arnonix the dick. Atronix. Atronix. A t r o n i x. That's what I wrote, but I couldn't read it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and the captain's like, he's a, uh, he's a bit of a dick. Yeah, he's a, but I mean, you can't really call him a dick to his face when he can melt your face off, uh, or make it look like an accident. And kind of looks over at Thalia and he goes, "You heard about that, right?" Oh, did I? Mm. I'm sure it was a mess to clean up. Luckily, I was on vacation. Lucky for. You. Yeah. Was it was it as bad as they say? Mm-hmm. Never mind. Don't don't tell me the details. I'm about to eat. Speaking of, um, I mean, picks up the silver bell and rings it, and the bell hasn't he hasn't put the bell down, and the door opens and Gerard walks in Gerard! with a tray, and he goes. You're back. Excellent. Excellent. I was hoping you were back. And he pulls off the lid. And there are seven. There are seven tankards on it. Matching tankards. And he goes, I thought you would all want something uh, from your from your travels. I figured you'd all be tired and a little a little weary. So here. And he sets the tray down on the table. Um, he's like, I'll be sure to let the mayor know that you're waiting. That might speed up this this whole council process along. Um, I'll be right back. And he gives a, oh, a oh. very Before as he's bowing, he looks up. Do you, do you know anything about Atronics the jerk face? He doesn't seem to like you, and you're wonderful. And he was a dick. Mm. <laughs> <sighs> that unfortunately is a, a personal disagreement we have but uh well i'm on your side whatever it is and i give all i up. i appreciate that um unfortunately there aren't very many sides in that issue it's really him against uh the rest of us mundane mortals he's a and he, he kind of leans in and in like in that stage whisper and the captain and his two guardsmen can hear he's like he doesn't like people that can't do magic Unfortunately, there's not a lot we can do here. So, but we carry on as best we can, uh, and and do what we must. And if he perceive, if he feels that way, then he feels that way, and that doesn't stop me from doing my job as well as I can. Uh, any any additional need, I, sir Sir Dragon? Have you finished your Have you finished your keg? Would you like another? 
I mean, it's dead. <laughs> Lummy. Knock, knock. Lummy. Lummy. Lummy's drunk. Lummy would like another gig. <laughs> another gig. Yes. Uh, same same ale. Would you like something special? So, something something special sounds delicious. Something special it is. Anything else? Anything else for, for the room? You might want to have a drink ready for the mayor. Mm, how how strong? I'm, I'm considering asking one. you for a shot myself. That's an interesting. How it was that bad? It's pretty bad. Looks over and it, are you so? Where real quick setting the scene? There's a whole bunch of like comfy armchairs with ottomans for you to put your feet up on there's a couple of like fainting couches or chaise lounges around this room all done in that blue the mayor's blue um where'd you put the dead dwarf uh in front of my feet. on the main table <laughs> he's just like sitting in front of you on the chair I'm, i didn't sit down he's, just just on the ground. he's like a stuffed turkey <laughs> just laying on the ground and he so gerard looks around and he just goes he's not asleep no no he's no. not I'll make it a double <laughs> and turns and just gives a quick bow and exits the room. He's not asleep. <laughs> um, so a couple, a couple more minutes go by. Um, an undetermined amount of time passes. <laughs> um, more drinks arrive being carried by servants, not Gerard, uh, just like very professional, very demure looking servants um that look like walking into a room of nine different races like it's you know every other tuesday and he's like man it's whatever i don't get paid to ask questions i'm here to serve drinks um and after after waiting around for a little while um robbie you get that feeling on the side of your head again And you turn, and one of Frank's eyes is white. The one that is uh, on the, the wall-facing side, so only you can see it. And there's a quick... The command line pops up. He goes, We must speak privately. Take the automaton head. Politely. And it blips away. Oh, that's weird. Um, who, what's, what's everybody's passive perceptions real quick? 14. And 11. Uh, uh, wait. Passive. 15. 15. 15. So, uh. Quincy's. Lithar, you catch a um, actually Lithar and, and Thalia, you guys catch you see a flash of white kind of flick across Robbie's eye just like real quick across and then quick back and it, it's almost too quick to notice and it, you, you'd think it was a flick of the eye except you remember seeing this kind of thing happen before and this is this is twice now you've seen something that looks like if you were outside it would look like sunlight just flashing across steel um but you're in a enclosed room um but it's it's it was super quick and super faint so i'm i'm going to approach may i borrow frank he has requested to speak with me I'm going to look at Thalia just like. What do you need Frank for? It's kind of like uh, not exactly Frank right now. He has requested to speak with me. Frank. Frank can't talk. I didn't build him that way. Frank can't. I just let off a burst of static. The same that he did earlier. Uh, right. Um, yeah, sorry. I'll 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 stay out of it. <laughs> I'm gonna let I'm gonna let this ride. All right. 
I give him to you, but I need him back so I can fix him because he's my he's my boy. I miss him a lot. <laughs> I understand. Would you like me to find the dick that was with us earlier? <laughs> he's mine. I I fix Frank. I fix Frank. The, I, the eyeballs before you said that the dick. That was amazing. <laughs> Oh, I can't wait to watch this later when I get that. It. That IPA almost went out my nose. <laughs> <laughs> that been rough. Oh. Anyway, so, so focus up real quick. Um. I'm gonna just kind of like unhook him from my belt and just kind of plop his disheveled head on the table. Okay. Um. So the head. Um. Which way is the head facing? It's facing towards Robbie. It's just facing towards Robbie. Um. So this this table is like coffee table height, so it, it's pretty low to the ground. But because of like the shape of the head, it's kind of angling up at you, and you see twin white lights light up in uh, in Frank's eye sockets, <laughs> and the mouth opens just probably an inch or two, so the eyes can like adjust and see yours and uh in that same kind of burst of static you hear hello robbie hello and the head kind of the eyes kind of look back and forth and do like a, you could see that kind of looks down and up he goes you appear intact were you able to find the anomaly anomaly found unable to acquire request designation one Understood. Uh, and when the one is heard by everyone in the room in their native language, there's just like there's bursts of static going back and forth, and then you all just hear one. Oh no! Hmm. He goes. Do you know who I am? Would I? Um, you know, this is, it's the same voice as you've been hearing, and it's the same, it has the same authority that the command line, like, it's, it's, it's what's inside your head. You get, like, this is definitely whatever is inside you that is more than just you. Designation one. You are prime. I am. You are of the prime. I am Primus. And you have been chosen for a specific task. Command line, please update. One moment, and the eyes shut for a second, and they open again, and this time they open very wide, and everyone sees this white light come out of Frank's eyes and press like up against Robbie and up against the wall behind him. And Robbie, you're getting... You you basically catch a glimpse of divinity. There is like you've never you've heard mortals and organics talk about gods and the powers that they have. You get a glimpse into what mechanical perfection is. This is the ideal of every single 
peace has its place, has its purpose, and will serve that purpose or else be removed and replaced. And you see this image, and it looks basically like you see a from the hips up this torso. And it, it's just flat metal, burnished metal, and six arms equi- stretching out, forming an equidistant hemisphere. If you were to follow like the lines of the fingertips, you get this sphere. And the ref- when you get to the hips, it looks like water, but it's m- like this milky white. But there's enough ref- there's a reflection in it, and you see the same pose. And it has an eerie resemblance. It <clears throat> resembles the symbols on your hand. That's six evenly spaced gears. And the light fades back. And the eye lights kind of turn off and then rekindle a little bit. And he goes, You know now what I am. And you know now that you are more than you were. And more than what your friend made you to be. And you see the command line tick down again. And everyone at this point, I'm assuming, is paying attention. Uh, Mm -hmm. You see the white flash run across the eyes. And it says, uh, unlocking, accessing memory. And it pulls up a picture and a name. And she says, Gino. And then it sort of that that is pushed to the side, but not like tucked away back into the depths of your brain. It is sort of like if this was a table, it is pushed to the side of the table where it can be accessed later, but now is like the per the one on one chat. And goes a deal was made to bring you back and to make you more than what you were. Obsolescence is not ideal. And there are forces at work to render obsolescence to everything. Something happened to that dwarf. Even I do not know what happened to that dwarf. But that organic is not organic. There were two words he said in Machina. They are behind this or involved in some way. Find them and find yourself on the way. And the eyes turn back and just turn back into Frank's red. So to everyone outside, to everyone outside of that, basically there was a huge blinding flash of white light. It turned down. There was a bunch of static came out of Frank, and then the white turned off, and then his eyes turned back to normal. (laughs) All in about probably, it probably took about two minutes. Like this whole exchange. Mm. I uh. I take a couple steps back. It would appear that your friend may be the beginning of the end of this world. I suggest we find him. Who now? 
Oh, that sounds dragon. like a lot of effort to me. I believe the words were obsolescence of organics. That sounds bad. And how can we trust Frank's head? I'm going to gently take Frank's head from Robbie and just pass it back to Mari. <laughs> it's like... My uh, mouth is when, just kind of open. When you pick up the head, it is it is warm. Like mm. there there is the this has had a, there's a lot of heat still kind of in this. It's not uncomfortable to hold, but it's like okay. it is it is warmer than the room. Noted. <clears throat> Y'all hear me? Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the hell's going on. So you're telling me this tiny shiny metal is going to end the world? Repetitive phrase and machina. Does, do does any of us know mean? what that means? I've heard of the tale of Fox Machina, if that's any hope. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Mercer. <laughs> you can't do that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Robbie, when he says in Machina, one of the part of the info dump that you just got from the Primus pops up like an email notification. <laughs> One unread message and Machina. <laughs> um, would you like to open this file? <laughs> oh, of course. Um, no, I think I'll put it off till next Monday. Okay, great, perfect. <laughs> Welcome to my job. Uh, it's oh, a it's a doc it's a doc X, so I hope you're running Windows 10. <laughs> um, so the, this file pops up. And inside is just like this, just a lot of exposition. Um, in Machina is an is a force on the Primus's domain. It's a piece, but also a separate piece of Mechanus. They up to this point haven't made like the just huge power like info dump they believe in reincarnation by hurling their bodies into the the pool at the primus's feet to be rebuilt and channeled into machines and work their way up the chain in the hopes of becoming primus so this is uh a mechanist sect, so it is. Is it organics or is it mechanicals? It is both. Usually, okay. It is. It is usually. It is usually like it's a small kind of. It's kind of a kooky call. It's like science. It. They've been regarded as basically like Scientologists. Okay. Like they're just kooky. They do their thing and like they don't bother anybody. Okay. Uh, and in the gentle, wilty tones of Robbie, I just dump that information. Uh, yes. So the, and so the in Machina is not uh, well, is not feared as a cult, um, but something has has changed the balance of power, mm. and Rachel felt very strongly about that and has abandoned us. <laughs> oh no! Uh, but to so they're they're The long goal is like, oh, maybe one day you reincarnate and become, you know, become a god. But something has changed, and they're now acting outside of the material. They're acting outside of the Primus's plane, uh, which excursions beyond the plane are rare at best usually like scouting parties of Modrons and the March of the Machines, which is, it is not the time for the March. I think um, if I send is very true to how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
has my ale shown up yet? Uh, yes, your your yeah, ale has just arrived. I'm gonna down that bitch. <laughs> uh, give me a con save. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> Gerard put something in this, <laughs> and it's delicious and punchy. <laughs> and not like mm, fruit punch, like mm, I'm unconscious. Um, I thought that face was like a nat 20. So. You're, not, you're not unconscious, but you are definitely like... It, it feels like fire in like that warm, comforting like how heat doesn't really bother you too much you're just like it's like sinking into a bed of warm coals Uh and just like like nasty (laughs) you just like relax and feel comfortable it's this long bike part too um and around that time as you down that drink um i'll wait till rachel gets back and she says she if see if she has any questions do you have any questions about the info dump and exposition the, the quick info that you guys just received. Uh, if no, yeah. If okay. there <laughs> if there are a group of entities throwing themselves at the feet of this guy, why doesn't the guy who's standing there just ask them what the fuck if they're throwing themselves into this pool at his feet? Yeah, what what the fuck? <laughs> I assume on a normal basis. It does not bother him. Hmm. Now, there is a metal dwarf running around. Fair enough. And, and also, Robbie, that because you now have a good understanding of the hierarchy and where you fit in that hierarchy, they are literally beneath the Primus's notice. They are like ants throwing, they are like ants crossing a road and getting run over by a car. The car doesn't give a shit. The person driving the car doesn't give a shit. But the ants are hoping to one day become a person to drive a car. Like, that's the the scale of separation is so great that the Primus has had no, just the Primus hasn't really given a shit because he's busy being a god. And it's so far below his notice that until you were involved, it didn't matter. Um, so, around that time, the door swings open, and a crowd of various well-dressed noble people of determinate of indeterminate gender, race, the whole hodgepodge. It's probably about a dozen of them in all. Um, make their way out. Um, you do see. Uh, most of them are dressed in very fine noble regalia, various house colors, a lot of richly dyed fabrics and stuff like that. A um, couple of couple of ornate ceremonial daggers. There is one that leaves the room in atypical uh, clothing. Uh, it is a gentleman in full plate with. His hand sort of on the hilt of his sword. And he's very deftly weaving his way through the, through the crowd. Um, and he stops as he's walking through the sitting room. And he looks at Lamy. He goes, Where did you get that? I'm just going to kind of look up and give him a wave. <laughs> Get what? Uh, he's drunk. He walks over. Oh yeah, he's drunk. And as he shit. as he gets close, <laughs> this man is probably like six eight. Okay. Shaved. Oh, I am. He's six eight. I'm shaved six eight. head and broad. <laughs> like he, he's just a lot of dude. Uh-huh. Uh, Thalia, you recognize. That this is the uh, the commander of the shield of the saint. Was, was I'm sta- the I stand guy? up as soon as I see all the people exiting. By the way, 
Yes, Ronan. Was this the plume guy? No. Oh. This is different. Oh, no. Um he so had fair. and his armor has the same embossed shield on it on the chest piece. Mm. Um and Thalia, he he only goes by uh Commander Commander Bartholomew. Um that that's all anyone calls him because it is his rank and his name. And he comes over and he leans down into your face. Alami goes, Fair, did you get that armor? You you're much shinier than I am. That's impressive. I like yes. that. Uh, Answer the question. I I I, I found give me it. give me a wisdom. Okay, yeah, I, 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 found, I found it. You found it. Where did you find it? On a dead man in the sewer. <laughs> he just came out and said it. <laughs> Is this man telling the truth? Somebody vouch for me. Who's he looking at? Is he just he's looking he looks around the room at all of you. I just nod. Yeah, he was dead. I'm just gonna be like Yeah, we survived. That guy didn't, so this was not make it. So you found the body. Yep, yep, found it. Of a shield of the saint. There it and was. You took it upon yourself to remove his armor and yep, take it yep. as your own. Correct. It looked Clearly. much nice. It looked much nicer than mine. Was he going to continue to use it? <laughs> <laughs> I love having a robot. <laughs> Bartholomew, he stops. And his, as he's gotten closer. His nose is basically touching Lamy's, and his eyes have not. He has not blinked this entire time. He's just staring him down. Mm. And he stands and he turns to Robbie, and he goes, "There are rules in place for what is to be done when one of our brethren falls." Well, something ate him, so... This man has disrespected the rules. Tell me, (coughs) dragon, do you follow the saint? Uh, Should I? (laughs) I really want to save him, but I don't know how to react to this. (laughs) There's a very, very tense pause. <laughs> what, what you you want? You would like to interject, Lithar? Would Would you like to interject? Let me make that into a question. <laughs> I don't know if I should. That's on Do you. The, what is this dude? Six eight. Yeah, he's big. He's a little guy. He, he's the he's the one of the biggest humans you've seen. He and I are both six eight, so we, we yeah. match. Like they're comparable. <laughs> it's, like stand, it's like standing next to a pair of linemen when you're the fucking kicker. Like how, <laughs> how much has Lithar drank since your so you, since you didn't ask for anything special, you guys are just feeling like well rested. You're feeling like you just had like a good warm meal, and you're just, so I'm not like buzz drank. You're you're not drunk. Lamy is drunk because he asked for something special. Right. And I'm playing hard on that, buddy. <laughs> um, I guess out of character, I probably wouldn't interject unless I was drunk. Since okay. this dude is probably like twice that's, my size. That's fine. Yeah, this dude is like... This I dude, also don't really know how to handle this. So honestly, <laughs> I really want to interject. Yeah, like I want to, but I'm also like, this is not going to go well if I it, do. So I don't know what to do. Just do it. Yeah, yeah. If 
if if oh, oh Rachel doesn't want to okay. interject. You know what? Yeah, <laughs> fuck it. Fuck it. I will interject. Fuck it. There you go. Uh-oh. Lithar is just gonna take a big gulp and just put his glass Uh-oh. down and say, "Well, if I'm being honest, these rules that you speak of are not well known am- amongst travelers. So, in reality, he is." completely innocent of taking this armor you know this guy died trying to do what we were doing we didn't die this guy died so i mean technically we won so give me a persuasion check no my persuasion's so bad <laughs> oh hold on my D closed hold on uh i think it's minus one it is minus one it's so it roll is. well <sighs> where the hell there it is okay uh, oh boy. And I don't have inspiration either. Fuck. <laughs> What's your charisma? Ooh. Uh, my charisma is eight. <laughs> and my dexterity is twenty. Uh, Listen, I rolled everyone's a, gotta have a dump stat. I rolled a sixteen. So that's a fifteen with your modifier. No, seventeen minus one. So 16. okay, that's your total. Great. Yeah. Sorry. So he he stands up very slowly. Oh God. I'm pouring to a drink. Full as height. Yes. And he turns to you and he goes, That may be the case, but the rules must be enforced. What, what are the rules? I'm just going to reiterate what Robbie said. At, at this point, I hold up my palm with the picture or with the symbol of the Primus in it because he asked if we followed whatever he believed in. And I just, Do you follow the Primus? No. I follow the saint. Must I interject my law on your law, as you do to us? If... Let me put it to you this way. Machine. If I were wearing one of your brethren, if I had skinned him and for wearing him as armor. How would that make you feel? I would know where to shoot you, as I would know where your weak points are. (laughs) Ravi! He he has this... This is the first time you've seen him have anything other than a frown and, like, the stirred face. And he breaks into this very grim smile. He goes... That is part of it. The other issue is that the armor is not his. He has not earned the armor of the saint. How how do I earn it if I'm already wearing it? (laughs) Out of character, how the hell do I express that I just witnessed this man do almost 80 damage in one strike? (laughs) (laughs) For real, yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I mean, you could remind him that he also is a uh, he also has a, a pal- he also has a divine a divinity that he follows. Um, and this is mostly for you, Josh. Like this dude is basically like my god's better than yours why are you wearing the armor of a god you don't believe in because right now you're drunk and that is absolutely against like, he's more mad that you're drunk and wearing the armor than just the fact that you're wearing the armor hmm what did i say to him last <laughs> How do you josh is it? drunk in real yeah, life yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm not drunk in real life. I, just, <laughs> um, I think the last thing you said to him was like the. Uh, how yeah, he said, what, what, what are the rules? I'm wearing it. He, no, he said I needed to earn it, and I said, how "Yeah, I, you said how I could I earn it if I'm already wearing it?" You, <laughs> you did earn it. You took it. If you wish to join, if you wish to keep the armor, you join the order. I'll consider it. Then remove the armor until you. Joins the order. Nope. 
<laughs> nope. Tell me, dragon. Yes. What do you know of faith? Oh, I know quite a bit of faith, let me tell you. And I'm gonna, gonna pull out my sword and try and make it on fire. <laughs> okay. <laughs> are, what are you trying to just like... Are you just yeah. flexing? What does that have to do with faith? Yeah, like, what's just, your, it's just a flex thing. You're just, you're just flexing <laughs> on him? No, no threat. Just look what I can do, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he, you, so he sees the sword come out, mm -hmm. and he reaches for his mm -hmm. and pulls it out of the hilt. And he sees yours ignite. <laughs> and he stops for a second. And he looks, and he goes, Fell. why didn't you say so? And he pulls his sword, and he keeps it low across his chest, and makes his combust. His flame is a clear, piercing blue. Hmm. I'm gonna. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna basically hold my empty cup and look around at the room and be like, "All right, this guy's copying me. You, 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 you saw that." He takes the sword, he shoves it back in his in his sheath, and goes, "Find me tomorrow at the at our fortress, and we will discuss the terms of your armor." Where is your fortress? Please tell me it's not far. It's very close. Excellent. And he, he gives a look around the room, kind of sizes everybody up. A curtsy. Gives, he, <laughs> this give, is not uh, the dude to give curtsy. Me perform, give me no! a performance check on the curtsy, please. <laughs> no! <laughs> Ooh. I get drunk at the best uh, time. That is a 17. <laughs> He's... He's very impressed. Hey! He, he looks and he, he does a real quick like and he, he kind of looks around and he he does a very polite like half bow from the waist and then he turns and gives like a three quarter bow to, to Thalia and leaves the room. Um and at this point every, like he was the last dude in the room. Everyone just like Mosey passed, especially once hands started going to swords. Everyone was like, fuck this, we're leaving. I'm going to go over to Lonnie well, just... and just pat my hand on his shoulder and be like, we really have to work on your day drinking, friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't, I don't <clears throat> see I don't see a at... problem here. Mm -hmm. all, I, all I think is Mr. Clean had a bit of a stick up his butt there. Uh, Gerard Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Lither. I was just saying. I look at Lam and I say, "You are you are not going there tomorrow." Nope. Why not? He his fire was blue. What if he wants blue fire? What color is his <laughs> fire now? My my he, fire. He's the platinum dragon, Bahamut. So he has the the. It's colored? still like so. It's like a silver flame. Hmm. Not blue. You want to keep that armor? I probably wouldn't go there. See, I feel the opposite. I feel if you want to keep the armor, you have to go there, or this guy's gonna hunt you down like a dog. There's six of us. <laughs> and, and through the open door here. Oh, you just met Bartholomew, didn't you? <laughs> Gerard pops around the corner and he's like, <laughs> he does that, and he looks at Lummy and goes, <laughs> Oh. That's why he did that. Are you sure you want to keep that armor? Yep. Well, unless you, of course, ahead. you have a slightly better version of it. <laughs> and Gerard just goes, It's your head. The mayor will see you now. Turns. Son of a bitch. Yeah, leads into the, the council chamber. <clears throat> uh, 
I'm assume I'm gonna assume that y'all follow him. Yeah. I bring yeah. the body. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll make sure that I'll, you're lugging around this dead dwarf. <laughs> I'll make sure Lamy is uh, walking accordingly towards the right location. You not might wandering be. around. Uh, yeah, give me, give me a con, give me a con save with advantage, please. Uh, me, Lamy. Oh, I was like me. Yeah, I just want to see. If, like, oh, oh. that was a first low roll. Let's see how this goes. Oh, hey, that's an eighteen. Yeah, okay, you're the fact that like you kind of had to channel your god which burned a little bit of the alcohol out of you but also the fact that like there was almost a fight uh yeah. it got your, it got your blood up it got your blood going and you're feeling much more clear-headed mm. so everyone kind of kind of trickles into the room uh and the it's the same room that you guys were all in before um the pink feathered captain or the um the captain is there from earlier, and he's chatting with um, the blue plume gentleman. I thought and, the uh, pink plume was the pink plume that was the lieutenant. Uh, I totally forget what color made the red plume. Because it, it yes, popped pink up plume, through the Pink plume was the crowd. lieutenant. It, um, it was yes. I, I'm paying attention to ranks right now. <laughs> yes. So so this is this is the captain that walked with you, uh, not pink plume. He is off. I don't know, directing traffic. Is or this something. the captain that was down in the hole? Because that was a yes. red plume. Red plume. Yes. This is this is Captain Red Plume. Okay. Um talking to uh talking to someone still still helmet on with the blue plume of uh the mayor's in the mayor's colors on his helmet. And the two of them are having a conversation. And the captain sees you entering the room and he you see him kind of point over at you guys and sort of his his move his gesture to show that he's kind of explaining what had happened, um, and the mayor and Ergen are having a, a sidebar conversation up by uh, the biggest chair where the mayor has been sitting, um, and you see that there are three goblets sitting by the mayor's chair. Uh, one of them looks like it. one of them is clear, and two of them are a dark, almost like a bloody red. And the two of them are having a, a fairly animated discussion, um, as they're as they're kind of chatting about these things, or about about various things. And as you get closer, um, you hear them. It sounds like they're just talking about, just like the politics and who, which houses are or which nobles are going to start making plays against other nobles and sort of laying out what the next week is going to bring. Um, and they also they, they seem to be placing bets on who's going to do what. Um, and as you walk close, they'll be like, "Ah, oh, no, no, 20, 20 crowns on Marcus. He's not he's not going to make any he's not going to do anything that stupid." Like, no, no, there's there's enough there's enough rumor happening over in Cinderwall that he might he might try to do something. I think we might see something a little more aggressive from him. Uh, oh, you're back early. I know Gerard had let me know that you guys were coming, but well, welcome back. And uh, did you did you find your friend? Things are bad. And I plop the body down on the table. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> it's like this dwarf just like slams like kind of into the table. Just like, um, is he face down or face up? Face up. Is okay, so like, no, uh, he's not. He's not decaying. The the wizard took care of that. Um, so just thud and this dwarf like his head just kind of bounces off the table a little bit and Ergen <laughs> Ergen is sit is standing there with this trying to hide a grin um because a, a grin on an elf is an amazing thing and he's trying to be as demure and professional as possible the fact that you just dumped a dead dwarf on the mayor's table <laughs> and the mayor's just like <sighs> Okay. Does the name Fothramax ring a bell to any of you? Because we think he's bad and he's under your city. Uh, and Thalia, pipe, Thal Thalia pipes in and goes, Furanax, actually. Furanax. I should probably write it down correctly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I almost like you writing it down wrong. Um, <laughs> and 
uh, the mayor and Ergen kind of look at each other. They throw a sidelong look and there we go. No. No, I don't know any. I don't know anything. You know? And Ergen's like, I've been around for a couple of hundred years and I don't I don't know any the fire and axe, fear and axe. Yeah, no, none of that. None the, of that uh, really makes sense. Is he telling? Can I truth? roll perception? Oh, hang on. On thrall. What was your question, is, thrall? Is he, t- is he telling the truth? Which one? <laughs> not knowing uh, what we're talking about. Which one or both? Uh, both. It's like, okay, both. The mayor is is being genuine the mayor does not know any fear and acts does not know anything ergen doesn't know the name but he knows more than he's letting on mm-hmm. but i don't know that he he you're you're getting the feeling that ergen is definitely more Ergen knows more than he's letting on, but and he it's said he not. Didn't know anything? He does. He doesn't know the name. No, I uh, know. But, I, but he, did he say to us that he doesn't know what we're talking about? He, he did when he. So he's like a oh, fear axe. I don't know. I don't know anything about a fear and axe or like any anything anything in the sewers. That's that's where it starts to tick up. Like he he knows there's something in the sewers that he's not letting on. Can I roll perception just on him if he's telling the truth? Since, on Ergen? Yeah. Or would that be insight or perception? That'll be insight. Insight. Um, and give it to me at disadvantage. Why? Because you like him. Not because you like him, but because he's really good he's, at this. He's smarter than me, pretty much. Like he's... he, because because you guys are the same race, is really a, like a, a like a sizable portion of this. Um, what did you say? Insight. Insight at disadvantage. Well, what if I tell? What if I tell Lathar that he's. Are you just going to like lean? You can Ooh. speak Orcish because we now know I speak Orcish. I guess, yeah, if, yeah, I if you want to just be like, I don't, I, something's, something's fucky with Ergen. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll say you, that in Orcish. Okay. To Lathar. Does that, does that something, save something. my rolls? I, I would, I would give that to you as just a standard roll. Yeah. So like you're, you're, you're assisting. Um, so take the better roll? Uh, scrap just, all of that and roll again. Okay. Just one. Just one. Uh, right. What? Plus two. Insight. Yeah, I got a sixteen. You, you, you. Once you hear thrall, just like in like the low guttural grunting, just be like. Uh, what exact? What exactly do you want to say to him? Just like he's lying, or well, he's just he. He's Sums not up saying. Like, he's not saying everything that that he knows. That he knows. Okay. So yeah, you you hear Thrall just kind of like mutter. Uh, he's not he's not telling us all he knows. Uh, and you you take a, a closer look, and there's definitely something. Um, it's not in his his face. His face is that perfectly composed old elf face. But there's something in the eyes that doesn't fit the rest of it, and you can't quite figure out what it is. So I'm going to look at him in the eyes and wait till he makes full on eye contact with me. And then I'm going to say, What aren't you telling us? In Elvish. In Elvish? Yes. Who else speaks Elvish? I do. I speak Elvish. <laughs> uh, what does Thalia speak? Thalia does not. She speaks somebody. celestial, draconic, and infernal. <laughs> she is a very oh, specific. The important ones. <laughs> she is. Uh, she's like a PhD student. She has a very <laughs> narrow field of study. Um, the dead languages. 
Yeah, the well, dead or undead, <laughs> the problematic languages. Um, so Ergen throws a look at you, Lithar, and just goes, it, it's very, very faint. Shake of the head. Just super, super faint. And everyone who's, because uh, <clears throat> at this point, the mayor is talking to to Thalia and to Ronan, um, just like explaining why the fuck there's a dead dwarf on my table. Um, also, I pr- like there's now wine spilling because I'm pretty sure you just like hucked it onto the goblets. <laughs> and it's like there's like wine and water spilling everywhere. I mean, I, I would have tried to miss the goblets. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of flailing dead weight. The Dwarves table shuddering. It's stuff stuff spilled, and he's like, blah, 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 like what's happening?" And like, he's he's a little distracted, so he doesn't notice. But everyone who speaks Elvish gets the vibe that like Ergen knows something, and he's not. He's keeping right. a secret from the mayor. Um. So he doesn't respond. He just kind he of like- he looks at you. He makes he acknowledges the eye contact. He's basically he saying real, not now. He does like a real faint shake of the head. And he kind of, he makes eye contact with everyone else who's looking at him. And then he kind of shuts his eyes for a little bit and then opens them up and uh, the, <laughs> the, the um the kind of guilty eyes that he had when he looked at all of you are replaced with the more inquisitive eyes that uh, that more match the mayor as far as like asking questions and figuring out what's happening with this with this body. So I'll just like respectfully like kind of bow my head at him real quick, like a respectful like, all right, now's not the time, but all right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm assuming Ronan and, uh, and Thalia have given like the quick rundown on why yeah. there's a dead dwarf on the table. Can we just uh, assume for time's sake that I run through the whole thing with Thalia yeah, you guys, you guys, giving out yeah, corrections? The, I want to make sure you. that I emphasize how much of a dick that wizard was and how much of a dick Thankwell was. And that there are rat people living under the city. So, so you guys are, are getting to that and uh, the mayor goes... Hold on a second. There's rat people. There's rat men mm-hmm. under the yeah. city, like yeah. genuine how rat men. Were they? Like how tall versus like, like they're on their hind feet. They're like five foot. I'm like big. Like All of them. Here. Like uh, depend. Like the adults. Like Thankful was five foot. Like on his back feet. Like they're they're a little bigger than a dwarf, but they're not nearly as stocky. Splinter. Um, and apparently some of them are slavers, so you have that to look forward to. Yeah, slavers, I'm sure. I'm sure they enjoy the fact that... Bastards. God, I can't stand slavers. I broke his spine for that. It was quite enjoyable. I'm, you did. I'm sure you did. I'm sure you did. I'm, and I'm sure you enjoyed it as well. Yes, Mr. Mayor, your sewers are rather dangerous. Oh, well, welcome to living in a big city, I suppose. We lost, what, eight guardsmen? And the man in the blue plume, like, pops his head up and turns. He goes, 12, sir. He has 12 12 guardsmen to uh, what was apparently a nest of alligators in the sewers. I don't know. They must have. Well, normally we have no problem with the alligators, but these ones were living under Scholar's Walk, and apparently some student didn't properly dispose of his enlarging potion and uh that was a problem uh have you ever seen a sewer gator that's 20 feet long i've i've the generally don't sent, seen sewers the, the party you sent down there before might have they're dead all of them yep, yep we yep. we found three of four we found a dusty man uh <laughs> A man in armor that now he's wearing, which is a whole other thing, and some <laughs> thievy <laughs> man who killed himself with a fake tooth. Uh, okay. 
He's like, who, who did you send? And Thalia kind of leans over and she's like, Quid, Dusty, Drew, and and, D- <laughs> and Jonathan or Julian, Julian Somber Shield. He goes, oh, well, at least I don't have to pay them now. Um, and what I suppose about, I have, about that. That's, that's yeah, yes. Yes, you want your money. Yes, yes. Fine, it's fine. Tell you what. <laughs> Money, please. I hate that you had that gif so <laughs> readily so available. Ready. You, your gif was in the chat before you <laughs> said that, and he, he, the man is just like, yes, yes, and he like snaps his fingers, and Gerard pops up. He's like, yes, sir. How can I? How can I? Just use it? The money that was for the original party that went down. Can that be increased and distributed to uh, these these fine folk here? Ex- excuse me. Um, no, we call those Mr. Fine. Uh, sir, sir construct. Do you have? Do you need money? Is it still ne- necessary for purchases? Generally, yes. <laughs> then I believe I would need money. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> He goes, um, yes, let's increase it to um, three, three, 350. 350. Five, 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 five. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take my hand and kind of like attempt to find Lamy Schnoot to kind of shush him, but I'm just gonna kind of like awkwardly paw at his face. <laughs> uh, give me a, give me a persuasion check, Lamy. Oh, good. I am good at those. Jesus, you have plus seven. That's a 19. Uh, the mayor looks at you, gives you a quick one, up and down, and he goes, I'll make you a deal. I Tell like you what, deals. I'll make you a bet. I like bets. I'll do 350 for all of you right now. And, and he looks over at Ergen. If you come back here with Bartholomew, and you're still wearing that armor Aww. by sundown by sundown tomorrow. I'll make it five for you, because that I want to see. And Ergen's just like, oh, God. I assume I'm paying him the extra hundred and fifty. And he goes, You don't have to. I have the. I have like, I have the city coffers. He's like, No, no. If it's a if it's a bet, it's personal. Fine. And he takes a bag and counts out 75 gold and puts it on the table. And the mayor reaches out and pulls out a bag and puts 75 gold and puts it on a pile. And the two of them shake on it. And the mayor reaches out to you and goes, is that a bet? Deal. Shake hands. And as you shake hands, there's a tingle of magic that runs Uh. up your... uh, up your arm. He goes, good. And the, there's this faint tingle of magic. And he takes the coins and scoops them into a bag, ties it up, and sets it on his chair. He goes, well, now that that's settled, let's take a look at this dwarf. So should we all increase our money by 350 gold? 350 gold. Dope! Congratulations, y'all got paid. <laughs> Um, Don't get used hel- to it. <laughs> it helps that the mayor and Ergen both like you. Um, and we'll, we will let Thalia know that she also gets a chunk of that. She gets a cut of that as well. What's Electrum? Uh, not 350 important. 350 gold? <laughs> 350 gold. And that is each, Damn. correct? Per person. Per person. I will text Dude, you that now. I got 425 well. gold. God damn. I got more uh, than you. Damn it. So, so, and I feel like that's a, not a bad spot to stop because um, right. that'll be about three hours of play. I agree. Um, so you guys Work. are all getting paid and the quick, un, the quick study of the dwarf is, uh, is underway as you guys take a look at the, uh, um, at the body that's currently on the table um, with the captain and commander of the city guard kind of having a sidebar conversation in the room with you. Now I will, I would, before we end, end, I would like to point out and be like, now that wizard dick of yours 
said would we like it reanimated or just other things it might be useful to wake this guy up if he has that power he was kind of a dick though so i don't know if you really want to ask him let's have that conversation next, next time. game okay next time <laughs> and so they will we will basically cut like the 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 end scene of the episode is credit like the credit music starts to roll is you guys like getting your money and you see people like the money's being parceled out and everyone's kind of settling at the table around this dwarven body just doing a real quick like autopsy of it all right so we're good that's ending Deal. yeah we'll call it there Bloop. <laughs>